video we're going to be introducing the concept of aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is a macroeconomic concept and it is the first part of a two-part model that is used to illustrate several macroeconomic factors. First let's define aggregate demand and look how it is graphed on a basic diagram. Aggregate demand is simply defined as the total demand for a nation's goods and services in a particular period of time at a range of price levels. The aggregate demand curve can be plotted on an axis with average price level on the vertical axis and real GDP or gross domestic product on the horizontal axis. Real GDP, the abbreviation we will use, is a capital Y which is short for national income. Average price level we will use a PL. AD is a downward sloping curve showing an inverse relationship between the average price level of a nation's goods and services and the level of real output demanded at a range of prices. It's similar to a demand curve in that at higher price levels a lower quantity of national output or real GDP is demanded. As you can see here at a higher price level of PL1 only Y1 output will be demanded. But as the price level of a nation's goods and services falls to PL2, the quantity demanded will increase to Y2. There are four components of a nation's aggregate demand. These each represent different stakeholders or consumers of a nation's output. We have households who demand goods and services for consumption. Household consumption, the abbreviation we will use, is a capital C. In addition to households, there are firms who demand capital goods in which they invest. The short abbreviation for firm spending on capital goods is capital I for investment. Next we have the government sector. Government, which spends on public goods and services including education, infrastructure, health care for the nation's people, all of these different types of government spending we use the capital G for an abbreviation for government spending. Finally we have the foreign sector. Foreign spending on a nation's goods and services are known as exports. Of course if foreigners buy a nation's goods this counts as a positive towards the nation's aggregate demand and its GDP. However if domestic consumers buy foreign goods we must subtract the spending spent on foreign goods and this of course is called imports um, in order to come up with net exports. So export income from abroad minus expenditures on imports from abroad. This gives us net exports or XN. A change in any of these four types of expenditures will lead to a shift in the nation's aggregate demand curve and an increase in aggregate demand or a decrease in aggregate demand depending on whether the type of expenditure either increased or decreased. The sum of consumption, investment by firms, government spending, and net exports gives us the total aggregate demand or the total demand for a nation's goods and services in a particular period of time at a range of price levels. We know that if any of the components of aggregate demand change that aggregate demand will either increase or decrease but this raises the question of what can cause a change in one of the components of aggregate demand. We're going to go through each of the components of AD now and talk about some of the factors that can lead to an either, either an increase in aggregate demand or a decrease in aggregate demand. First let's talk about household consumption which as you recall refers to the spending by domestic households on goods and services. The following factors can lead to a change in the level of household consumption in a nation. The first is the level of household income. If household incomes rise due to an increase in the wage rate in a nation or an increase in the demand for labor in a nation, household income will increase and therefore the level of consumption will increase. An increase in consumption will lead to a shift in the aggregate demand curve to the right, as we see here to AD1. This could be caused by an increase in household income which causes consumption to increase. However, if household incomes fall, consumption will decrease and AD will shift to the left to AD2. This could be caused by a decrease in consumption. 
The level of household income is not the only determinant of consumption. In addition, household wealth is a determinant of consumption. Now this raises the question, what is the difference between household income and household wealth? Household wealth refers to the value of a household's assets minus its liabilities. Of course, this has nothing to do with the wages earned by a household. Household wealth refers to the value of assets such as stock portfolios, the holdings of uh, government bonds by a household, or the, perhaps the value of a household's real estate or other investments not related to the household's income. Of course, this helps explain why something like a stock market bubble can lead to an increase in the aggregate demand in a nation. Even though household incomes might not be changing, if the value of the stocks held by households rise, households will feel more confident and consume at higher quantities. On the other hand, if there's a collapse of the stock market or a collapse in real estate prices, household wealth will fall, households will feel poor, and they will consume less, and aggregate demand will decrease. The third determinant of aggregate demand is real interest rates. So of course, interest refers to the return that a household can receive on saving money. Therefore, at higher interest rates, there's a greater incentive to save and less incentive to consume. At lower interest rates, however, households will prefer to borrow money and consume big ticket items like cars or make new improvements on their homes, which uh, require borrowing. At lower interest rates, households will save less, borrow more, and therefore consumption will increase. Thirdly, we have household debt. Of course, debt refers to the amount of money that households owe from previous consumption. Uh, this could be credit card debt or student loan debt or maybe even debt from uh, mortgages or loans that they received to buy a house. At high debt levels, households must allocate more income to paying off debts. Therefore, consumption falls. If households have high levels of debt, there will be a lower level of consumption and aggregate demand will decrease. Finally, the final determinant of consumption is household confidence. This is pretty straightforward. If households are confident about future incomes or employment opportunities, they are likely to spend more. so consumption will increase. On the other hand, if household confidence is low and if they're not very confident about future opportunities or future income levels, then household consumption will be lower and aggregate demand will decrease. These are the various determinants of consumption. Level of household income, the level of wealth experienced by households, real interest rates, which determines whether households will wish to save more or consume more, the level of household debt, of course, at high levels of debt, households have less disposable income with which to consume. If household debt is low, then households will have more consumable income, allowing aggregate demand, demand to grow. And the level of confidence experienced by households. If households are confident about the future, they'll consume more now and aggregate demand will increase. If con confidence is low, household consumption will be lower. These are the determinants of consumption, and therefore each of these factors can lead to a change in aggregate demand. The second type of private spending that contributes to a le the level of aggregate demand in a nation is investment. Of course, investment refers to the spending by firms on capital equipment. The factors that can affect domestic investment include, most importantly, again, the real interest rates. Real interest rates are not only the return that savers receive for saving money, they also represent the cost of borrowing money. At lower interest rates, firms will borrow more money and buy new capital equipment. This allows firms to demand more capital equipment and therefore employ more workers and contributes to the overall level of economic activity in a nation. Of course, if interest rates are higher, the borrowing costs are greater, so firms will invest less. So the level of real interest rates determines the level of investment in the economy. Of course, just like households, firms are subject to their own level of confidence. So the expectations of firms, which affects the confidence they feel, affects the level of investment in the economy. If firms are confident about future business opportunities, 
or their future levels of sales, this will lead to higher investment now and a greater level of aggregate demand. If expectations are poor about future business or sales opportunities, firms will invest less now and therefore less aggregate demand. Anything that causes investment in an economy to increase will lead to an increase in aggregate demand and a shift to the right of the AD curve. However, if investment decreases in an economy, AD will shift to the left and there will be less overall aggregate demand. The primary determinants of investment in an economy are the level of real interest rate and the expectations of firms about future business opportunities. Next, let's consider the level of government spending in an economy and discuss some of the things that lead to an increase or a decrease in government spending and therefore affect aggregate demand. Government spending is determined by government's fiscal policy. This refers to the level of taxation and government spending. Anything that increases the level of government spending will shift aggregate demand to the right. Anything that decreases the level of government spending will shift aggregate demand to the left. Therefore, graphically, we can see that a fiscal policy that either lowers taxes or increases government spending will shift AD to the right. Why do lower taxes lead to an increase in aggregate demand? This is because households' disposable income will rise, businesses' disposable income will rise, and therefore consumption and investment will rise. Direct government spending contributes to the level of aggregate demand for a nation's goods as well. So higher government spending or lower taxes will shift AD to the right. If a government goes into debt, this could increase aggregate demand in the short run. But just like household debt, if a government has too much debt over time, it will begin to have to pay off that debt and therefore taxes will, be have, to will have to be raised and the level of government spending will have to decrease. Therefore, government debt is another determinant of government spending and therefore aggregate demand. The final component of aggregate demand is net exports. This, of course, refers to exports which we use an X for minus imports in a nation. The main determinants of net exports have to do with, of course, the incomes of foreign consumers. If foreign incomes rise, exports from a particular nation will increase and net exports will increase. Basically, exports refers to the output produced in a nation but consumed by foreigners. On the other hand, if the incomes of domestic consumers rise, then it might be expected that net exports will actually decrease. This has to do with the fact that as domestic incomes rise, domestic consumers will buy more foreign goods, therefore imports will increase and net exports will decrease. On the other hand, as domestic incomes rise, domestic consumer spending increases as well. So whether or not higher domestic incomes leads to an increase in aggregate demand or a decrease in aggregate demand depends on how much domestic consumption changes relative to the consumption of imported goods. The next determinant of net exports is exchange rates. Of course, foreign consumers must exchange their currency for the domestic currency in order to buy our exports. If our exchange rate rises or our currency gets stronger, our exports will appear more expensive to foreigners. Therefore, export income will fall and net exports will fall. On the other hand, if the domestic currency gets weaker, the, this country's exports will appeal, appear cheaper to foreigners, therefore net exports will rise since foreigners will be likely to buy more of the country's exports due to the weaker currency. The three determinants of net exports are income of foreign consumers, the incomes of domestic consumers, and the exchange rate of the nation's currency. If any of these factors change, exports can change, and therefore the level of aggregate demand in the economy can change. In the next video lecture, we will look at aggregate supply. We will add it to our model and we'll see how the equilibrium price level and the equilibrium level of real GDP is determined in a nation by comparing aggregate demand and aggregate supply.